Hello, and welcome to week six. We're going to talk about entrepreneurship. But before I forget, smudge on my screen. But before I forget, I want to talk a little bit about some common issues you may experience as young adults, especially some of you are entering adulthood or the college world pretty soon. Some of you are in high school. So I thought I'd give you some advice. There are going to be individuals out there where you're like prime target for them in the sense that they want you to uh, invest in their business or take on a role running your own business, like different companies trying to sell things um, that really they call them pyramid schemes. So someone recruits you, oh, you can make thousands of dollars a month. They're going to tell you everything, balloons and ice cream, you know, the whole nine. And the idea is they want you to pay money, usually for training, quote unquote, or whatever. So you pay money and they train you. That person pockets the money. And I think they probably move it up the pyramid. You know, someone's overseeing them. So, And then they train you and then they send you out in the world telling you you can make tons of money. And uh, typically you can't. Like there's one company I remember they try to get me to sell knives. And yeah, yeah, you might be able to convince your neighbors, but really, really doing, you know, how many people really want your knives? And, you know, your sales pitch is one thing, but the idea is, is not as lucrative as they say it will be. Same with YouTube. Anyone tells you on YouTube, there's commercials, quit your job now, join my system, buy my system, my sales system. I'm going to show you how to be a millionaire in a month. And they're usually sitting in a mansion with a Lamborghini and all that. One. Probably not their mansion. Two, probably not their Lamborghini. The way they're making money is selling a system. Whether or not it works, they can always say, well, you're not working it enough. You know, like, well, have it in your head that the problem is you rather than the system. So people make things up all the time. So I'm going to give you an example here. And the reason why I bought these is because my daughter's friend, uh, needed the money but she was working for a company and her background is in marketing and it, it's okay like for her i did this because she's a very nice kid so they would try to sell me knives and all this other stuff and i'm like i don't need any of this stuff i have great knives so this is what cutco i think so you get the only hard cutting boards it's not a big deal so make it sound like it's the bee's knees and she's young, and probably the first person she pitched to was me. And I don't, again, for that kid, I didn't mind doing it. So I had cut, cut, cutting boards. Really nothing that amazing. And they cost an arm and a leg. But if it helped her, you know, earn her way, college and all that. And I'm sure she's very successful now in whatever it is that she's doing. Probably about done college at this point. But anyway, um, you know, it's not sustainable. So be very careful. Anyone tells you that they can provide you unicorns and rainbows and balloons and ice cream through their system or program, they're not telling you the truth. The truth is when it comes to entrepreneurship, it's backbreaking hard work. And you can't expect it to be anything but. That's the whole point. So entrepreneurs in general, what they do is they understand that they're taking huge risks and they're willing to take those risks and experience not achieving their objectives. I don't like that word failure. Failure is a bad F word, but you're not, <laughs> not achieving your objectives. And, uh, you know, they understand that's going to happen and they learn from it and move on. And then they work towards succeeding, you know. And eventually, hopefully, they achieve results. A lot of times, uh, individuals might be passionate about a certain product or certain business, but is it going to sell? Is it going to make you money? Here's the challenge, folks. We could be passionate about something. I'm passionate about a lot of things. But it doesn't necessarily mean that everyone else or others are going to be as passionate as we are about it. And in the world of business, this is what we need to contend with. We need to be content with the fact that certain ideas aren't going to work, even if we're passionate about it. Like, for instance, I'm really passionate about hockey. Can I get on the ice and play? No, no, it's a bad idea. Um, 
for several reasons, but I can still watch it. You know, that's great. You know, I'll enjoy it that way. But getting back to all this, it's just because we're passionate about something doesn't mean that we'll succeed with it. And it has nothing to do with us in the sense that certain products just won't work. That's it. So, I mean, do you want to be selling knives in the saturated knife market? Do you want to be selling Cutco brand cutting boards in a saturated uh, board market, cutting board market? No. And it's funny because I was like, well, I was going to do this lecture. I'm like, let me pull these cutting boards to make the example. So, again, I didn't mind helping that kid out. Uh, long story. you know. I hope she's doing well. But um, when it comes down to it, you have to think about a few areas here. For instance, if you have a product, what differentiates your product from the competitors? What's unique or original about what you're offering? Where are you marketing this and to whom are you marketing your product or service? We talked a little bit about this last week. It was important to have those factors. What makes you stand out? Uh, the bigger part that I've noticed when I've worked with entrepreneurs is um, sometimes they will spend too much as far as overhead costs. So, for instance, if you are running a business where, say, one of my students back in the day out in the Ohio area was running a business like a youth intervention program, uh, nonprofit at that, too. But to her, you know, she's an entrepreneur still, but to her, it meant the world to do this. And do you really want to have your own building? That's a lot of money. Is there a way to collaborate with another organization that needs a service that you're providing? Collaborate with a larger nonprofit rather than going out on your own. Is there building space you can maybe share or rent so you can save on overhead costs and you can spend on, you know, buildings later and electric and all that. But is there a way to reduce your costs? Are you in the right area to promote your business? So, for instance, if I wanted to run a hot dog cart, which, by the way, some days sounds rather awesome at this point, but uh, I'm not going to sit at Central Penn, you know, with my hot dog cart. I make some money with my hot dog cart. I mean, they probably wouldn't let me do that, but you get the idea, just hypothetically, right? I may find a place in Harrisburg, for instance, to uh, sell hot dogs. Well, what area am I selling them? Am I allowed to sell there? Uh, what's the um, probability of higher profits being located in one place or the other? What are the costs? What are the licensing issues? Um, what are the uptimes and the downtimes, like hypothetically? I don't think they'll let you do this, but say I was selling hot dogs at the Capitol building in that area in Harrisburg. Huge, lovely place, right? All right. Well, when are they open? When are they closed? Can I sell hot dogs on the weekend? What times can I sell the hot dogs? Are people going to get sick and tired of hot dogs and want something else? So another competitor come in with something more interesting than hot dogs like hoagies, and all of a sudden I'm losing profits, you know. So how do I differentiate my product to uh, meet the needs of various consumers? What are the costs involved with doing that? So there's a lot of variables that you need to consider running your own business. And uh, this is not to stray you from doing that. Uh, if I said in my day as a younger adult or a kid, I want to run my own business. Certain individuals will say, well, this is what's required for you to do that. And others will say, be practical. I'm like, what are you doing? Be practical. Get a job. You know, you don't want to take those risks. Just get a good job. Settle down. You know, you don't need to do that. That's a lot of risk. You're not going to succeed. Da, 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 da. I'm not going to say that to anyone. I'm going to be more on the uh, here's what's required mentality. So lessons. First and foremost, product, promotion, price, and place. It's four P's of marketing. You'll learn that in marketing class. What product are you selling? And how is your product different or better than other products? What makes your hot dog special? There's a way to do that. Promoting. What's the name of your business? Do you have a catchy logo? Do you have a catchy name? Uh, something that people will recognize, like a brand recognition. 
uh, what are the price? Either what's the price? Am I pricing higher because I have better hot dogs and people want a higher quality hot dog? Do I, am I doing comparative pricing around the same as my competitors? You know, so that's a big thing. How are you going to price this? What are people willing to pay for your hot dog? You know, as an example. In place, where is the optimal market? You don't want to sell your hot dogs in the wrong place. So, for instance, on the road near Central Penn, I'm probably not going to make as much money as I would say uh, lunchtime in Harrisburg. So, location is very important. So, those are the four P's of marketing, and you'll learn about them. We'll go through marketing a little bit in this class, but you'll get more details in a marketing class. So, remember the product promotion price place. Uh, remember that this is not something you can just neglect. It's like a baby. A business is like a baby. They need 24-7 care, those little ones. That's because they can't do much on their own. Your business will not do much on its own without your help, without you constantly nurturing that business. So just like with a baby, uh, you don't want to neglect a baby. The reason why businesses fail often is because they are neglected. Uh, there's a certain degree of apathy. This isn't working. I'm not doing well. I might as well give up. And then you just let the business fall apart. So, uh, I mean, if you really want some simple examples, look at Bar Rescue, Restaurant Impossible on TV. Uh, but one of the more interesting TV shows, if you've never done this, is watch Shark Tank. And yeah, it's on YouTube, but it's also on MSNBC. They're on like all the time. And you'll get a flavor about these entrepreneurs that are multi-millionaires, billionaires, or whatever, and what they do in order to succeed like that. And a lot of it has to do with 24-7, 365 work. They're, they're working all the time. Uh, and it's not so much a problem, I think, to entrepreneurs because they love every minute of doing it. Uh, so their passion is succeeding with business. You know, they... They want to have the great ideas and concepts. And um, I think you'll notice with a lot of entrepreneurs, you ever talk to an entrepreneur, they will uh, tell you they've also not achieved outcomes before, too. So, you know, it's important to research how entrepreneurs have succeeded over the years. Learn what they did. What was their routine like? How do they think? How do they create strategy? How do they apply the principles of product promotion, price and place? into practice. And it's a living, breathing thing. <clears throat> I mean, you'll hear stories. When I started out, I literally had five roommates. I ate noodles all the time because I put all my money back into my business and I was making money. And then eventually it exploded and here I am now. And uh, you'll see that. So I'm not, it's not for everybody. Uh, I don't think it's for me. Let's put it that way. Maybe, maybe someday in the future I could do uh, consulting you know, management, leadership, consulting. But then again, I'm in a saturated market full of that. What differentiates me from others? I'd have to figure that out, come up with a theme, something different. So uh, I'm not that in that stage of my life right now. But I have noticed younger generations are much more interested than older ones in, in running their own business. When I taught in Philadelphia, it was an adult, more of adult college programming. Uh, but they had to start letting in young adults out of high school, just out of fairness. I think there was a law about it. So I had two 18-year-olds who just finished high school in Philly. And they were mixed in with 30 and 40-year-olds going for their bachelor's degree. They've been working for corporations for years. And they just needed a degree to move up the chain of command. And they were awesome. They really kept up with the older adults. They, they did their work. They worked really hard, but the fun part about them is they both worked uh, in the daytime doing dishes. You know, we do dishes, we work, we just clean dishes. It's our job to have a little bit of money, and then we decided to come here to go to school, and we're working on a business. Here's our business plan. You know, we're working on this. We're saving our money. We're at home with parents, and they were neat, and it to to them it was like I can't understand why everyone's not trying to start their own business. I thought that was really interesting, and I wonder how those fellows are doing. I hope they're well. 
and all that. But I thought that to be very interesting. They just had it in their head as entrepreneurs. And even when things do not go well and there's things in life that can happen, a pandemic, for instance, you learn how to sustain. You learn from those experiences. You learn to adapt. You can't expect everything to be wonderful, even if you are succeeding. The moment we start succeeding in a business is the moment where things can happen. Others are looking at you. Competitors are looking at you. Um, maybe someone's looking to acquire you. Oh, you're fine with me. Well, you pay me well, that'd be great. But you get the idea. Like, um, yeah, maybe I would not be the best entrepreneur. What's your goal? For someone to buy me out. Uh well, anyway, you get the idea there that those individuals are just at it 24-7, and it's a lot of hard work. Uh, the other, uh, I guess, counterexample would be Tim Ferriss. There's a book called The 4-Hour Workweek. Um, he got to a point where he outsourced most of his work overseas, and he lived his dreams of travel and do kickboxing in Thailand, tango champion in Buenos Aires. And, you know, um, so that's an interesting book, by the way. It's a four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. Lots of podcasts and all that. It's an interesting guy. And, uh, you know, it's not that he worked four hours. It was just kind of the theme that, you know, he outsourced most of the work. But that was not after struggling. And of course, there was struggle and 24 7 work and all that. He just came up with a different model and lifestyle design. So I encourage you to go ahead if you're so inclined to check out the four hour work week. I have it always on my shelf. There's certain things I've done in my life that's helped me buy more time, you know, in my lifestyle uh, because of that book. But as an entrepreneur, he does very well, but he's, uh, you know, at a stage where. He's outsourced a lot of things that he didn't need to do so he could focus on those areas that he could. So mostly overseas, virtual assistants and the like. Again, very interesting book, very fun read. I'm not making any profit off it. Don't worry. I'm just giving you some thought. I'm sure you can get a used copy for 10 cents or something or go to the library. Um, so other than that, basically uh, what we're going to learn today, well, today, this week, I'll tell you, it's been a week, is we're going to look at the advantages and disadvantages of operating in a global market as well. So what happens, what are the implications of a global market and how do we handle that? And you have an assignment due, and this is going to be a fun assignment. I want you to research one successful entrepreneur and describe what characteristics she or he has that made the entrepreneur successful. It's only a couple paragraphs. Just cite your sources in APA. You've done very well so far, class, on that. And just really focus on an entrepreneur that you're interested in, that you would like to model. And modeling sometimes is a big part of success. You want something. You want to succeed in something. Modeling that person can help you learn what they did and use those best practices for yourself. And this is not to say that all of you want to start your own business, but at least you're getting the idea. It could be modeling the person, not for running a business, it could be the leadership style, the way they handled problems, the way they overcame obstacles, all that's fair game. So have a great one and I'll see you on the boards.